I'm Dr. Peter Higgins from the University of Michigan, where I'm the director of the IBD program. My basic science lab works on the fibrosis of Crohn's disease, and clinically I work on patient reported outcomes in inflammatory bowel disease. So I'm presenting later today on nutrition in IBD and how to implement a nutrition program in your IBD program. We've done this at Michigan in part because patients are always asking about and looking for nutrition solutions to IBD. It's really a problem in a lot of ways. One, because they frequently restrict their diets in a way that causes malnutrition and weight loss. They frequently will rely on nutrition in place of effective medications. And if we don't engage patients on this, they will do things that will actually result in self-harm. Uh, the reason patients are so interested is because they know that food affects their symptoms. That's very clear. But it doesn't necessarily affect inflammation. And so we need to engage them on the symptom side and help them identify foods that reduce their symptoms, as well as engaging them on inflammation and showing them that while it doesn't change objective markers of inflammation, we do have medications that do that. So we really need to engage the patients and on the food level with dietitians and dietetics programs, usually with a low FODMAP diet, which is very important in reducing symptoms, while encouraging them to stick with us and anti-inflammatory therapies that are proven to work and not give up control of inflammation to be exclusively reliant on food. So the key for patients with IBD is not to restrict calories or protein, not to restrict their diet in a way that will lead to low iron, vitamin D, or B12, which are common deficiencies in IBD. In a sense, we're encouraging them to have a broad and varied diet within the limits of what they can tolerate. And what patients frequently find is they get gas, bloating and distension related to certain foods, often foods with simple sugars or fermentable oligosaccharides and polysaccharides that are encapsulated in the low FODMAPs diet. It can be very difficult to identify which foods cause these problems, and it can be very helpful for them to meet with a dietitian who can go through what foods have high and low FODMAPs and a food diary of that patient to identify what FODMAPs they're sensitive to.